There has been a lot of development in the last, uh, let's say, 10 years in multiple myeloma for the use of imaging techniques because we have now very potent tools that can be useful not only for the staging of the disease that has always been done, but also for the evaluation of the response to therapy. So this is the reason why I may say for two years now, in each uh, MRD session, there is a part uh, related to imaging because uh, uh, it was clearly demonstrated that when you are evaluating uh, MRD after therapy in myeloma, you should look uh, inside the bone marrow, so with the uh, conventional bone marrow techniques, but also outside the bone marrow, so with imaging techniques. So this was clearly discussed yesterday. There was this session where a part was uh, specifically dedicated to imaging and uh, to use uh, uh, imaging techniques uh, to evaluate the response uh, to therapy, you have to use uh, functional techniques that are able to um, capture the bone marrow disease metabolism and the tumor metabolism. Otherwise, uh, of course, uh, this is uh, not possible for uh, conventional anatomical techniques such as uh, X-ray or CT scan. So the two favorite ones are PET-CT and uh, MRI with the functional uh, protocols that are available uh, not uh, everywhere but in most places that are either diffusion weighted imaging or dynamic contrast enhanced. Uh, so what we discussed yesterday what, uh, was uh, what we have uh, already obtained which are the results in our hands and what is the way to go. Uh, in particular we discuss the fact that we do have several prospective uh, trials demonstrating uh, the role of PET-CT with FDG that clearly showed that uh, the complete uh, metabolic response of the tumor is uh, um, prognostic for the outcome of patients. Uh, so this is the reason why to date uh, all the recommendation mainly by the International Myeloma Working Group but also other groups uh, are recommending PET-CT for uh, the evaluation of MRD after therapy. But I also discussed that, of course, uh, PET-CT is not perfect and uh, does have some pitfalls, so we may also use uh, uh, functional MRI. And uh, we are um, having uh, increasing uh, use of this technique. So we do have some uh, data on the effectiveness and the applicability of this technique. The main problem by now regarding uh, functional MRI is a lack of standardization in the interpretation of the results. Uh, and uh, well, in the end we discuss which are the open questions, let's say, uh, that for sure one is the standardization of these two techniques, uh, the comparison between uh, MRI and PET-CT because uh, uh, we should understand if there is a uh, best or if we may use the two techniques uh, uh, in different maybe subset of patients. Uh, and third, uh, to my opinion, very important open issue is uh, the mm, harmonization of imaging with bone marrow MRD. So how to uh, join uh, these two techniques uh, and finally, of course, how to incorporate uh, this evaluation into clinical trials that can be driven by MRD. Uh, and I was very surprised to learn that uh, for the first time the Nordic Myeloma Group planned a clinical trial uh, using PET-CT uh, to discriminate patients for therapy. So that was the first attempt to build a sort of uh, PET-driven protocol in myeloma. Uh, of course, that's just uh, started to enroll patients, so we do not have any information about it. So this was the main uh, uh, discussion that we had.